We've got, as I said, more big businesses that do great things and, and, and good, exciting, energetic people. Uh, and yet, with all of those wonderful ingredients, we find ourselves at the bottom in so many ways that it just doesn't make sense. And there's no reason for this state that we all live in and call home and are excited to, to, to stay here. There's no reason for us to be dead last in unemployment or dead last in terms of how fast we're recovering from the recession or you know, 49th in high school graduation or at the bottom in SAT scores. I mean, I could go on. I was in the Peace Corps in South Africa. And we talked about infant mortality and maternal mortality as indicators of third world health. And Georgia's at the bottom in those indicators. I mean, this is Georgia. This is a state that led the country and the world in the cradle of the civil rights movement and the, the most dynamic, forward-looking place in the South and, and a giant uh, you know, economic engine. And yet, we're just not taking those ingredients and putting them together in a way that makes sense. And folks know that, and they see it, and, and they know that this is not where we should be or where we could be. That's right. And, and it's true. It's true, and, and folks are feeling it. And the second thing I want to tell you is, number one, uh, the first thing was, Georgia's got no business at the bottom. Right. Oh. And the second is that Georgia's ready for something new. Amen. And I'll Amen. tell you, we go across the state, we have traveled everywhere, we have been from ed to every corner of the state, and we have talked to giant groups of, of Republicans in rural Georgia about their education system. And they want it to be better. They watch it get bled dry. They're not getting the answers that they want from the folks in Atlanta, and they're ready for something new. That's right. And they're cheer for it if you want to. And, I think that's good. and, and they're ready for, for regular people to not be forgotten in Atlanta. I mean, if you don't have a lobbyist today in Atlanta, and I've been in the state senate for years, if you don't have a lobbyist, you're not on the radar screen. And what we've been telling people out in, 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 you know, in South Georgia, in North Georgia, in Atlanta, in Decatur, all around is that, is that if you've been left out because you didn't have a lobbyist, if you don't have a direct line to the governor's office, uh, you're not getting what you need. And small businesses like this are not getting what they need. And middle class people are not getting what they need. But, but the good news is that, is that soon those regular, everyday people, they're not going to need... A lobbyist because they'll have a governor. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People are ready for that. And the, and the last thing, in addition to education and the economy that we've been talking about, is ethics. I used to have this long spiel about ethics and here's what we were going to do, and it and, and just got, it got it got too hard to keep up with all the scandals that we've had. I mean, we had seven scandals in seven days a couple weeks ago. Um, but uh, here, here, my, my position on ethics in the governor's office is this. I think that we need something. <laughs> so if we, if we've got an, an education system that works that we can invest in and believe in and that invests in our people, we've got access to higher education, access to technical school, and the things that we need to get our folks ready to be prosperous people in the new economy. And if you've got a business environment and a business climate that works for everybody, not just the people that have a direct line to the governor's office, and if you add to that honest people, then we're going to have the state that we, that we all know we should. And, and that, that's it. It's not complicated. It's not, it's not hard. It's just doing the right thing. Uh, and it's not getting caught up in the mess that they're caught up in now. Um, I, I, I have one other bit of news. And it's that as of today, uh, there's 20 days left until the election. And as of today, we're winning. Yeah. Yeah. The election today, I'd be the governor. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you can't. We can't win the election today. <laughs> and so what we have to do? The election started yesterday. People are voting. Uh, my wife voted yesterday. 
I trust her. She says she voted for me. <laughs> uh, I think she did. Um, but if we do the work and we raise the money between now and November the 4th, we'll win. The governor has been stuck at 44% since the, basically since the snowstorm. <laughs> Frozen, you might say, um, at 44%. But, but we've moved, and we've passed him, and he knows it. And as of last Tuesday at 8 o'clock, he took down all of his positive messaging off of TV. And that's how you decide what the strategy of a campaign is. All the positive messaging is gone. He's just an attack dog. And he's playing for a runoff. And what that means is that the governor of your state doesn't believe that the, mo that the people of the state are going to come out and support his, his leadership. He expects that on election day, the majority of Georgians will reject his leadership. And, and that's a, that, that, that just tells you uh, where we are. And what that means for us is that in the next 20 days, if we do the work and we get the folks out to the polls, we will get to the 50% that we need and we will win. Yes, sir. And if we do that, it gives us the opportunity. Class, go ahead. That's exciting. <laughs> but it gives us the opportunity, again, to have this place that we call home be a place that we can be proud of every day. As a governor that will put us on the map as a dynamic, forward-looking, exciting place where other folks are going to want to move, that can take the reins off the economy and all these great ingredients that we've got. And so if y'all will talk it up, yeah. the thing I would ask for you is this. If you've got a little bit more to give from a resource standpoint, we'll take it. Um, and we need it. And, and, and it's incredibly helpful. I wish it wasn't true, but, but we need it. Um, that doesn't matter if you're from San Francisco or anywhere else. We can still take the money. Um, but but it, the other thing that we need from everybody is word of mouth. There's nothing that's more powerful in our politics than word of mouth. The TV ads are gross. Everybody hates them, uh, and, and, but, but they work in some ways. But to build a positive message, to build an energetic group of folks, the best way to do that is for you to talk to your friends. And if you're willing to talk to your friends, don't underestimate the power of that communication because you have influence among your folks. And if, and, if, and if your friends vote, just looking out at this crowd, I can tell that if your friends vote, we will definitely do better in the election, right? I mean, these are who we care about and who we believe in, and, and, and it matters. And so don't underestimate your ability to influence the election by talking. Put it on Facebook, put it on Vine, put it on Pinterest, put it on Twitter, put it on YouTube and everything else that, that, that you got on Instagram. Yes. What else? Uh, Pinterest. Pinterest. I said Twitter. Pinterest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. the, the point is we have the tools that we need and the ability to make this happen. So I appreciate y'all. I'm going to hang out for a little while and probably drink a beer. That's okay. Uh, and, then, and then otherwise I'll just be there uh, to, to be excited with you guys and to say thank you for all that you've done and for the energy that y'all are putting into this election. And if we do it, we'll win. It's exciting. Thank you. Thank you.